All right, so at the end of the last lecture, we turned on our flow, and now we're ready to go to the UI and do some testing. So I'm gonna navigate back to my home page here, and let's just take a look at the tasks that are available and see, sounds like a motorcycle is going by, um, see, see if there are any tasks that are open. And I don't see any. All right, so developer environment does not come with tasks. So let's just open up one of the accounts that we created. I'll pick Appleseed Incorporated. And I'm really just trying to make a task. So, okay, activity, here we go. So I need to make a task and I'll just call it test task. So if there's another way that you wanna make the task in Salesforce, feel free. I'll relate it to Tina Apples and we'll just Press save. And so we have our task here. I should be able to click into it and see our field. Yep, right there, our assigned coordinator. So we've done all this work and now we're, we're at the moment of truth. We are going to open up the assigned coordinator field uh, and then we're gonna pick one of these users, Tina Apples or Bob Apples. And what we would expect to see once we save the record is that the assigned to field, this owner ID changes from Nick Freights to whoever we pick. So I'll just pick Tina and we'll press save. And sure enough, it worked. So woohoo. <laughs> if your flow worked as well, pat yourself on the back. You've now built your second flow. And uh, this was one of the early flows I actually built in my career. And I don't know, I was always really proud of this. I was like, wow, you can just take the, the name of something in a pick list and find the user and go update it. So um, we'll, tr we'll try Bob Apples and yeah, that works too. So awesome. We'll go back to Tina Apples, and press save. All right, so that works. Now it's time for the bug. So I kind of said earlier that we were going to build a bug in, and then at the end of the last lecture, we, we talked about it a little bit. But um, we've set up our flow, and, and there's something lurking there that's hidden. And so my question to you is, what do you think happens if we try to put the assigned coordinator value to none? I'll give you a second to think. So if you thought about it and kind of reasoned it out and, and came to some sort of idea that, well, the flow's still gonna run and we're gonna look for a user, but we're not gonna find one, and that's a problem, then you're right. You know, that's the right track to be thinking about. Basically, when this flow runs and the assigned coordinator is none, um, it's gonna go look for a user and it's not gonna find one. There probably is no user that doesn't have a name. And so when it doesn't find a user, there won't be an ID value. So then it will try to assign a null value to the owner. And that should throw an error, unless I've totally lost my mind. We'll press save. And it says, yeah, you know, assign to ID owner cannot be blank. So if we were in a live environment right now in production, your users would be unable to change this pick list to none. You know, no matter what they did, they would just get this error. And you know, that could be pretty confusing. And so that's why it's best practice to, you know, test things out before you deploy them, because I don't know. This is pretty low impact in the sense that, oh, it's like, oh no, you can't change the pick list to none, like big deal. But you know, sometimes <laughs> your flows can like shut down the whole org. Um, I've had that happen where you deploy something and no update on the account object, for example, can be made uh, just due to the way something is set up. So we will navigate back to the flow and we'll take care of this error. And so I will uh, go here to the flow, which I still have open. If you don't have this open, feel free to navigate back to the flow builder through the setup menu and, and reopen this. And we basically need to update our flow such that a null value or, or an empty value in the pick list does not cause um, the flow to break. And so there's you know two ways to, to kind of do that. Um, one is a little bit better than the other. And uh, what we could do first is I'll, I'll just show you both of them. So the first thing that we could do is we could go to our uh, configuration element here in the start and we could press edit. And we could say, we, we could add a condition here and we could say, hey, in order for this to work, uh, the assigned coordinator is null and we'll set that to false. And, and what we're doing here is we're making our flow more restrictive in when it runs. And we're saying, don't ever run this thing if the pick list doesn't have a value. And that's a pretty good solution. You know, that will fix this specific error. Um, so we can do that. We can press done. 
And you'll notice that I just modified a flow that's in version one and it's active. And what we'll need to do before we can reactivate this flow is press save as a new version and press save. This will take us to version two. You can have as many versions as you want. Uh, the only thing to know is once you activate a flow version, you cannot, um, like that one's kind of locked in time, so to speak. So you can't go back to version one and, and update it and then reactivate version one. Um, any changes to version one, by default, make it version two. So we're now in version two and we made our change and that's still there, so that's good. But this doesn't uh, prevent another um, error that could pot potentially happen. So the reason that we might build this flow uh, to change based on the name rather than a lookup field is because uh, users may not know all the, you know, if you're a brand new coordinator at, at Universal Containers and your name's Tina Apples, it's your first day, you may not know all the people who are coordinators that you could assign this task to. So having a pick list is really helpful. And uh, having the owner automatically assigned based on that pick list is really helpful. But what if, you know, me as an admin, what if I enter a new person's name in here? You know, it's Tina Apple's first day, let's say, you know, someone else, um, Timmy Apples is now a coordinator and I enter Timmy Apples here, but I spell it wrong. So there is a value in the pick list, but it's spelt differently than the uh, Timmy Apples user record. So the pick list value and the user record would be different. Well, our get records would run and it wouldn't find a user. So it wouldn't be able to assign anything and update it. And that's a problem. So that's the next bug we are going to fix. And the way, you know, again, there's, there's multiple ways to do that. Um, I'm trying to think which one I want to show. I think, um, I think we'll, we'll go with a formula. Um, so there, the two routes I'm thinking is the first way is you could create a decision. So you could create a decision element here. Um, I could select decision and then I could check in this decision to make sure that we found a value in the get user records um, up here. Uh, the other way is just to create a formula and I will do that now and I'll show you how that works. So I'm going to press uh, the toolbox here in the top left and I'm going to select new resource and resource type will be a formula. We're going to get a ton of experience with these throughout the flow, uh, throughout the course, but um, uh, effectively formulas work just like formulas do inside uh, Salesforce as fields. And so we'll call this the owner ID formula. And I would say other than like flows themselves, the number one skill that you could really use in Salesforce would be formula building. And they come in super handy with flows. Um, and we'll get a ton of experience with them. So don't worry about that now. But um, I'm going to use a formula here and I'm going to use an if statement. So I'll type capital if, and then I'll do an opening parenthesis, and then I'm going to select um, the user ID. So I'm using the um, resource selector here to select the user ID. So I'm using the get user and pick list, and I'm selecting that here. And then I'm going to put a space or a couple spaces so that you can kind of see that in its, um, you know, separate from the if statement. And so this is dynamically referencing the, the user record that we found with the get element, the same way our assignment does. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to say is blank. Oops, caps lock is still on. And is blank is a specific formula in Salesforce that checks for null values. And so what this um, formula will do is say, hey, if that user record is blank, then instead of using that record, uh, use, a, use a different value. And what we'll do here is we will actually, um, we will not update the task is what we're gonna tell the formula to do. So the way to do that is again, by clicking insert resource, and we're gonna scroll down to the global variable for the task. We're gonna press task, and then we're gonna press owner ID. And we'll select that. And then I'm just gonna copy our first, um, resource there. So the get user and pick list ID. And uh, what I'll do is I'll put a comma after the record owner ID. And then I'll paste in the get user pick list ID. And then I'll put an ending parenthesis. And so this is an if statement, you should have uh, lots of experience with if statements over time. Uh, but what this is doing is saying, hey, 
uh, do a null check. Basically check if we found a user, if this is blank, uh, and then if it is blank, we're gonna put the record, whoever is the current owner of the task will stay as the owner of the task. If it's not blank, then you'll use the ID that you found in the pick list. And so we can check this syntax and it's valid. And I'm trying to make it, you know, pretty easy to follow along here, but just note that we have an if statement with an open, opening parenthesis. We have is blank with two parentheses here, followed by a comma. Then we have record owner ID followed by a comma. And then we have our, our pick list followed by a closing parenthesis. So I'll press done. I'll update the task owner and then I'll change this value and we're going to change it to our formula. And you see that once you save your formula, it becomes available. So I'll select that there, press done and press save. So that should solve any future bugs, whether um, the pick list doesn't have a value or if the value is spelled wrong, uh, now we're safe. And we will end this lecture there, but I want to do a debug run with you in the next lecture so you can get a feel for what that looks like. And I'll see you there.